Okay, so we are going to talk about a technique that uh, you probably won't use very often unless you are going to work uh, on a kid. Um, it's used probably mostly with pediatrics, uh, pediatric patients now um, or kids, and that's the occlusal technique. The objectives are name the common uses for the occlusal radiograph, describe and demonstrate proper technique for taking occlusal maxillary and mandibular radiographs. We can practice this a little bit in lab. Um, it's a little bit more challenging because we don't have a gigantic um, film that you would typically use for the occlusal technique. We can just sort of mimic it um, on Dexter with flattening out our sensor and trying the different um, angles so we can sort of you demonstrate it but it won't be quite as accurate. And typically the film size for an occlusal is very large. It's a film size number four which is um, about three in three by two um, inches so it's um, you know the about the size of maybe like a credit card or something. Um, it's based on the bisecting technique so you're getting that angle of your BID perpendicular to the bisector um, or it's more similar to the bisector than to a, obviously a paralleling technique and most often you're using this to examine anterior areas not as much in the posterior that's a lot of times when we um, have kids in our chair it's one of the easiest films to take that it's not going to gag anybody it's not going to hurt um, so a lot of times it'll be the first film that a uh, you do on a child at all. Um, you just say, bite on this like you're biting on a sandwich. And they're like, oh, I can do that. And then you have them bite down and then you point it down toward their nose or up toward their chin. So the head position is really important with the occlusal technique. You want the maxillary occlusal plane parallel to the floor and the mid sagittal plane perpendicular to the floor. So they can't have their head tilted to the side. They need to have their head nice and straight up and down and their maxillary plane, um, occlus uh, occlusal plane parallel to the floor. So some terminology, um, occlusal surface, that's the chewing surfaces of the posterior teeth. Occlusal examination, it's a type of intraoral radiograph examination to inspect large areas of the maxilla and the mandible in one image. Um, so usually they can get at least half the arch, if not the whole arch, in the picture. Occlusal technique is a method used to expose the a receptor to a, an occlusal examination. An occlusal receptor is a technique um, in the technique is the size 4 intraoral receptor. So some people, like on a child, you, you take the occlusal receptor it might be a size 2 film. But if we're talking about the kind of traditional occlusal film it, with the larger size film, it would be the size 4. Common uses uh, for localizing foreign objects in the maxilla or the mandible, locating supernumerary teeth, unerupted teeth, or impacted teeth, evaluating the extent of disease in the jaw, detecting a stone in the submandibular gland. For patients who can't open very wide, this is a very good option. And for children too small for a periapical film, this is a good option. Uh, of course, the pano has replaced a lot of these first ones up here, um, but and even for a patient who can't open wide they can usually open wide enough to take a pano but that's why it's really still predominantly used with kids is because you can get a fair amount of information uh, and it's fairly easy to take so for the mandible you can see the head position maxillary um, um, occlusal plane is at a is at a zero degrees angle or parallel with the floor. Uh, our machine requires us to tilt the patient back a little bit. Um, so that's for our in our rooms, the patient can't um, have their their occlusal plane parallel. They're going to have to tilt their chin their chin up a little bit. Place um, it on the mandibular teeth, the white side facing the BID. So this doesn't, this is hard to explain because we use the digital sensor, but it would be in the same, you would orient the traditional film. Um, we'll get some films out in lab just so you can look at a traditional film, but it would be the smooth, flat front 
and the back side of a traditional film is almost like looks like an envelope. There's like a part that you can peel back, but the front of it is smooth and flat and, and usually white. And that's the side that is facing the BID. So it's just like with our digital sensor, the back has the wire coming out, the front is flat and smooth, and that that's front that flat smooth surface faces the BID. So the patient bites gently down. Your direction of your angle of your BID is negative 55. Central ray goes right through the mandibular um, symphysis, I guess just down the middle. And then um, the timing is per the manufacturer. So for us, if you're doing um, through the anterior, you would probably use this, the either the premolar or the incisor button. Um, 0.4 seconds. So it depends on how that how that lines up with our our um, panel outside of the rooms. So I'd have to see which one that would end up being. I think that might be the I think that might be the canine shot or the premolar shot. So um, so that's for the mandibular um, topographic. So you can see more of the that you can actually see the roots in more of a, a longer version. Whereas here we're almost looking straight down on top of them. So then you're going to come more underneath. So the patient's head is going to have to tilt way back for this one so that their occlusal plane is at more at a right angle, um, vertical plane at a right angle to the floor. And then place on the lower teeth with the white side facing the BID, have the patient gently bite. Central ray is one inch below the chin and perpendicular to the film. So this is, you can see the BID is coming in perpendicular to the film, whereas in this one, it was more of at about a 55 degree angle. So it's a very sharp angle, but this one, the patient has to crank their neck back so that the BID can come perpendicular to the film. And then it's almost like you're looking right straight through the center of the teeth. This is a radiograph showing um, sci 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 oh my words sciololith um, or a stone in the submandibular duct. So over here, you can stake, we're able to localize the the stone in the in the salivary gland. Maxillary topographic. Um, Film. So the head, again, uh, occlusal plane is parallel to the floor. Patient bites. Now we're going to flip the film around so that the white, smooth area is facing up, basically. Uh, patient bites gently. And then you can see this very sharp 65 degree um, downward toward the nose. And the, the central ray is about a half an inch above the nose. So it's like you're putting it practically right down on top of the nose. And then coming off to the lateral, we can see, this is so we can see some posterior teeth. Um, here we kind of put it off to the side a little bit, so it's not um, right down the center. It's kind of more off to the side that we're taking the x-ray. And then we're going to come head position, mid-sagittal plane perpendicular with the with the occlusal plane parallel to the floor, place on the maxillary teeth, white side facing the BID, shift to the side of interest, so whichever side have the patient bite gently, and then we're coming in at about a 60 degree angle, and it looks like it's right outside of, um, it looks like it's hovering kind of almost right in front of the, right in front of the eye area is what it looks like to me, it doesn't say here where the BID goes, but I would guess it looks like it's coming down really close to hovering close to where the eyes are. <clears throat> so here's a lateral shot that shows an impacted canine. So this shows why this is um, helpful. And it also kind of lets you know too, you can sort of use your localizing, um, your localizing, uh, technique as well because if the images if all that was changed was the direction of the beam we use this as our baseline and the beam goes more distal the beam goes more distal and the root goes more distal 
then you know that, again, this part is more lingual and the root is more distal. Oh my gosh, I'm talking about something. You you might not have watched the other um, the other recorded lecture. So never just ignore me if you haven't watched the localization technique. And if you have, then that's I'm just trying to determine if where how the orientation of this canine is. Oh, and that's the last one. Okay. Well, then either go watch the localization technique or you're all done. I'll see you guys in lab.